Today we're going to be reviewing Chapter 31, Family Planning. Information about contraception. When we are educating our patients, it's important to give them current and factual information. We also want to consider where these patients are getting their previous information on contraception. Some sources such as friends, relatives, what they're hearing on television, social media, and we want to kind of take that with a little bit of a grain of salt, you know, explore um, what they know about contraception, and then we want to make sure that we're kind of giving them the correct information or clarifying anything that they have um, questions on or any confusion on, making sure that the people that are counseling them appropriately on contraception include nurses, physicians, nurse midwives, healthcare providers in general. When we think about information on contraceptions, we want to think about the role of the nurse in counseling, such as patient education, talking about what contraception is available, the risks and benefits of each method of contraception, proper use, especially for uh, single-use only items such as condoms, what to do if there's an error made, what are the appropriate steps, talking about emergency contraception and using that as a backup method of birth control. Um, and again, clarifying any questions, comments, or concerns, kind of debunking any myths that they might have heard from previous um, areas. Things we want to consider when choosing a method of contraception for our patients, the safety, protection from sexually transmitted infections, effectiveness, acceptability for the patient, even in a cultural setting, especially for religious settings too, that we want to make sure that we're kind of taking care of the whole person and really finding a method of contraception that fits their needs. We want to look at side effects, the benefits, availability, a very large one to consider as well as expense, um, especially if uh, we are working with patients who are low income. Um, we want to talk about their preferences as well and any other considerations. Age considerations, such as adolescence, we want to kind of dig a little bit into the adolescent knowledge. What, do the, what does the adolescent know about contraception, its use, its accessibility, so on and so forth. We want to talk about risk-taking behaviors and minimize those risk-taking behaviors. Talking about safe sex practices and behaviors that they can uh, exhibit. Counseling adolescents, we want to make sure we're using information and language that's appropriate to um, their age as well as appropriate to the patient. We also want to talk about um, patients in the opposite kind of spectrum in age considerations, perimenopausal women, what special needs they might have, what hormonal changes they might be encountering. Sterilization is a mode of contraception. Uh, there's two types of sterilization, female sterilization, which is a tubal ligation or tubal sterilization, which is typically um, a surgical procedure, as well as ma male sterilization, known as a vasectomy. That is typically an outpatient procedure. It is le less invasive than a female tubal sterilization. Um, so good factors to kind of consider when we talk about not only ease of contraception, um, but also cost. Um, Many insurances will cover um, a male sterilization as well as a female sterilization depending on the setting in which they're used. These are considered permanent methods of sterilization or permanent um, birth control uses. Hormonal contraceptions, there are several different, uh, different types that we can consider. Hormone implants such as the injection, the Depo-Provera. Um, implants such as the Nexplanon, that is a device that literally gets placed in the subcutaneous tissue, um, so under the patient's skin, typically in their upper arm. Oral contraceptives, those are pills by mouth, usually taken on a daily basis. We can also review with them the emergency contraceptions, usually a one pill, if not a two pill kind of dosage, available usually at the uh, local pharmacies um, without a prescription, which has really made an impact into the accessibility of these emergency contraceptions. The transdermal patch, um, which is just a kind of sticker placed on a patient's skin usually for about a week and they come with the kit itself comes with several stickers that kind of levels out the level of hormones that the patients require as well as the contraceptive vaginal ring known as the nuva ring and we can see that pictured inside eight of 16 here and that is um, something that goes inside the vagina gets placed by the patient and then is removed on um, the week where the woman is expecting her period or her menstrual um, cycle there oral hormone contraception 
contraceptives. There are several different varieties, some of which are combination of hormones, some of which are known as the progesterone only or what's known as a mini pill, and really patient-specific. So some patients who are, let's say, breastfeeding might choose um, to have a little bit of a difference in the hormones in which they receive if they're concer concerned about their lactation production in the postpartum period. So it's important to review what the benefits are of these contraceptions, contraceptives, excuse me, for your patients, what are some risks such as for a lactating mother decrease in milk production, and what are some cautions that they should have, as well as a review of side effects that could really impact a person's ability to choose the right method of oral contraceptive for them. Some other contraceptives continued here, um, the initiation pattern, blood hormone levels, what to do with missed doses. So that's a big uh, teaching point for patients too. And a lot of patients will have questions about um, missed doses. You know, should they, how should they alleviate a missed dose? What are the appropriate methods in which to do that? And it's important to review that with your patient, especially when starting a new oral contraceptive with them. Postpartum and lactation, we touched about that previously on our slide, as well as interaction with other medications. There are some um, antibiotics out there that can um, kind of discredit the use of oral contraceptives. So it's really important that when a patient is being placed on oral contraceptives, we review the fact that, you know, that is a risk of an oral contraceptive, is that drug-to-drug -drug interaction. So making sure that the, if they go on any different medications, that they review the fact that they're on oral contraceptives with their primary care provider, with their um, healthcare provider at the time, so that they can think about additional methods of backup birth control. Intrauterine devices. Is another method of birth control. This is a more long-term birth control, but it is not permanent. These birth control um, instruments are placed inside the cervix by a healthcare provider. It can be a primary care provider, it can be a nurse midwife, it can be a physician. And these T-bars get placed inside the cervix and kind of act as a physical barrier, as well as a um, one that does release a small amount of hormone. And the one we can see on the right, the IUSD, is the one that releases a small amount of hormone. That one's known as the Mirena, is the uh, brand name of that. While a copper IUD can last up to 10 years, and that is a hormone-free um, intrauterine device to prevent pregnancy. So some side effects, talking about what bleeding will be like, what are the expectations, uh, how long these instruments can stay inside, and what to kind of look for. And we can see that these instruments have a little uh, string at the bottom of them. In the beginning, when we place these with patients, we instruct them to check the strings to make sure that that device is still intact or still in the appropriate place where it needs to be, especially in the days preceding uh, implementation with these. We can talk about uh, what risks benefits might be um, reviewed with these patients as well with this type of device, as well as um, you know discussing the fact that these have minimal uh, drug interactions, unlike the... Um, the oral contraceptive. So it might be a great choice um, for um, patients looking to have a um, more kind of a device where they're not reviewing its use each day and they're able to kind of um, have it placed and then have it stay for several years. So these devices could stay anywhere from three years to 10 years, depending on the type of intrauterine device that they choose. A barrier method, this could be a chemical barrier. These are typically those single-use items. So chemical barriers, we think about spermicide. Um, it's typically used as kind of a, a lubrication to kind of um, fend off any sperm from being viable inside the vagina. And other mechanical barriers, such as uh, condoms, sponges, diaphragms, and cervical caps. We want to make sure that when we're talking about these barrier methods with, the, with our patients, that we're also reviewing the proper use as well as uh, plans for backup birth control if these barrier methods are not used properly or have um, some sort of use of error with them. Natural fam family planning methods include the calendar method, um, basal body temperature, assessing cervical mucus, and um, as well as abstinence. And these are ways that um, some women choose to kind of family plan or choose to um, selectively have intercourse on specific days according to their cycle. And you can see that picture at the bottom. Some uh, women are kind of reviewing the use of uh, cycle beads with each other. And that's um, a little kind of calendar-based method for what 
cycle they're at or what cycle day they're at um, using um, a physical object such as these beads there to represent their fertile and non-fertile days. Least reliable methods of contraception include breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is not a contraceptive, though most women do not have their period while breastfeeding. Women still ovulate during breastfeeding, so that's part of why um, it's listed as one of the least reliable methods of contraception, as well as uh, coitus interruptus, not an appropriate method of birth control at all, because we do know that um, sperm can be carried in um, part of the male lubrication that's secreted naturally um, during intercourse. We really want to think about the role of the nurse when choosing a contraceptive method. So really important, that patient education piece, talking about expected outcomes and how do we evaluate um, a patient's um, understanding of how to choose uh, the appropriate type of contraceptive for them.